squirrels. Here we go with some little men's. Get off of there. All right, let's see. John had just died. And they were over at Meg's. I forgot what was the last. Uh, they were just talking about how great John was. Uh, I'm not sure where I stopped. But I'll start here. No one could say a word of complaint against him. So just and generous and kind was he. And now, when he was gone, I'll find so much to love and praise and honor that I am proud to have been his friend and would rather leave my children the legacy he leaves his than the largest fortune ever made. Yes, generous goodness is the best capital to found the business of this life upon. At last, when fame and money fail, and is the only riches we can take out of this world with us, remember that, my boys. And if you want to earn respect and confidence and love, Follow in the footsteps of John Brooke. <clears throat> when Demi returned to school after some weeks at home, he seemed to have recovered from his loss with the blessed elasticity of childhood. And so he had in a measure, but he did not forget. For his was a nature into which things sank deeply to be pondered over and absorbed into the soil where the small virtues were growing fast. He played and studied, worked and sang just as before, and few suspected any change, but there was one, and Aunt Jo saw it, for she watched over the boy with her whole heart, trying to fill John's place in her poor way. He seldom spoke of his loss, but Aunt Jo often heard a stifled sobbing in the little bed at night, and when she went to comfort him, all his cry was, I want my father, oh, I want my father. For the tie between the two had been a very tender one, and the child's heart bled when it was broken, but time was kind to him, and slowly he came to feel that father was not lost, only invisible for a time. and sure to be found again, well and strong and fond as ever, even though his little son should see the purple asters blossom on his grave many, many times before they met. To this belief, Demi held fast, and in it found both help and comfort, because it led him unconsciously through a tender longing for the father who, him, who he had seen to a childlike trust in the father whom he had not seen. Both were in heaven, and he prayed to both, trying to be good for love of them. The outward change corresponded to the inward, and in those few weeks, Demi seemed to have grown tall and began to drop his childish plays, not as if ashamed of them, as some boys do, but as if he had outgrown them and wanted something manlier. He took to the hated arithmetic and held on so steadily that his uncle was charmed, though he could not understand the whim, whim, W-H-I-M, until Demi said, I'm going to be a bookkeeper when I grow up like Papa, and I must know about figures and things, else I can't have nice, neat ledgers like his. At another time, he came to his aunt with a very serious face and said, What can a small boy do to earn money? Why do you ask, my dearie? My father told me to take care of mother and the little girls that I want to, but I don't know how to begin. He did not mean now, Demi, but by and by when you are large. But I wish to begin now if I can because... I think I ought to make some money to buy things for the family. I am ten, and other boys no bigger than I earn pennies sometimes. 
Well, then suppose you rake up all the dead leaves and cover the strawberry bed. I'll pay you a dollar for the job, said Aunt Jo. Isn't that a great deal? I could do it in one day. You must be fair and not pay too much because I want to truly earn it. My little John, I want to be, I will be fair and not pay a penny too much. Don't work too hard, and when it is done, I will have something else for you to do, said Mrs. Joe, much touched by his desire to help and his sense of justice, so like his scrupulous father. When the leaves were done, many barrel loads of chips were wheeled from the wood to the shed and another dollar earned. Then Demi helped cover the school books, working in the evenings under, under Franz's direction, tugging patiently away at each book, letting no one help, and receiving his wages with such satisfaction that the dingy bills became quite glorified in his sight. Now I have a dollar for each of them, and I should like to take my money to mother all myself so she can see that I have minded my father. So Demi made a duteous pilgrimage to his mother, who received his little earnings as a treasure of great worth and would not and would have kept it untouched if Demi had not begged her to buy some useful thing for herself and the women children whom he felt were left to his care. This made him very happy, and though he often forgot his responsibilities for a time, the desire to help was still there. Strengthening with his years, he always uttered the words, my father, with an air of gentle pride, and often said as if he claimed a title full of honor, don't call me Demi anymore. I am John Brooke now. So strengthened by a purpose and a hope, the little lad of ten bravely began the world and entered into his inheritance the memory of a wise and tender father the legacy of an honest name and that's the end of chapter 19 and i am going to stop there because my mouth is so dry i'll be glad when all this sinus mess stops and I can stop take take antihistamines. Oh, it dry me up too much. I'm either leaking or all dried up. Never an in between. <laughs> Love to you all. Watch me get pink. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Bye-bye.